That's good. What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to take you behind the scenes in my mastering process. I've just been sent a new song to master by one of my clients and good friends, and I'm gonna show you guys uh, the full ride, actually, the full journey I've been wanting to take you inside the process. And that starts with prepping the master. So in this first video, there's gonna be two back-to-back. -back. So this is the first of two. In this first video, I'm gonna be focusing on how I actually get the song from the client, what I do to analyze it, and what I do to prep it for the mastering session. And I'm also gonna show you inside a couple of the creative spaces inside my house here. I do usually a lot of my mastering prep sessions, not in the big control room. I do them in my Studio B, which is a creative room. So uh, let's go hit the studio. So this is Studio B, my creative studio, and it's a multi-purpose room. I share it with uh, my fiance, Mandy, that's her workspace there. And we use it as a movie theater for the family and the kids, which we project over there. Those are actually acoustic panels that are air-gapped from the wall, and they're supplemented by some thicker acoustic panels that are behind me. And I have an extensive video series on exactly how I made these and the type of acoustic results you can expect and all about porous absorption and building acoustic treatment for your studio. I've got that video series on the YouTube channel. I'll link it below in the description, so check that out. We have a prefab piece of treatment up top. This is a Stratus ceiling cloud from Prime Acoustic. I like their prefab stuff, especially, especially their suspension system for this cloud. And I already owned it, so I just threw it up versus building something custom. But uh, this room definitely, uh, you know, we're missing treatment in the corners and it's not an ideal acoustic environment. Although it, it, I'll have to say it is pretty good. The results are pretty good in this room, but they're nothing like my control room. So to compensate for that, I mix on Ultra Near Field D-Max Audio Super Cube 5 monitors. And they do quite a good job of taking the room out of the equation. That's kind of why they can be right up against the glass like that. The uh, frequency response I get in this room on these speakers is actually pretty good. I have a whole deep dive review on them and why I like them and what I like about them on the YouTube channel. I'll link that below. But uh, a lot of times I use headphones in here. These are the Odyssey MM500s. I just got these. I've been using the LCD5s for a few years now, and I love them. These ones are tuned by the mix engineering legend, Manny Mariquin. But uh, I also use these Odyssey LCD XC closed back headphones and the Verum Audio Ones when I want some deeper bass extension. They have the largest membranes of all of my headphones. They're planar magnetic and they sound great. And uh, yeah, this is the room and this is where I like to do my mastering prep. As you can see, you know, I, this room has vibe. You know, I've got vintage lights, I've got Lots of plants, I've got a crystal salt lamp. You know, I can see out my window and I see trees in my backyard and the forest behind us. So I like to work in this room as much as possible, even though I have the control room, just because, uh, you know, there's only so many hours in a day you wanna be in a dark box with no windows, no matter how cool and good sounding that room is. Okay, so let's get into this master project. Right on, let's go grab the mix. Uh, I've been chatting with uh, the client on this one, my friend Angus Wilson just over messages, and uh, he sent me a Dropbox link. So let's grab the Dropbox link. We'll fire it into the browser. And I actually really like uh, looking at things in the Dropbox viewer because it shows you this exaggerated waveform, right? And one of the things that I want to talk about today that I do in my mastering prep is I look for the consistency of elements. And this is actually a topic of discussion that Nicholas DiLorenzo and I, Nicholas is from Panorama Mixing and Mastering, uh, discussed in our recent interview. If you haven't seen that interview, it's a great one. He's a prolific mastering engineer. I'll link it below in the description. And I asked Nicholas, what are the some of the biggest things that are important for you in a mix to be able to get great results when mastering, i.e. what are some of the biggest mistakes or face plants that some artists make when they send you their work or some mixers send you their, their mix. And he said, it's the consistency of elements. And so that's one of the things that I can look for because quite easily when you're looking at the waveform, you can see the macro dynamics of the song and you can see the micro dynamics. Macro dynamics, what do I mean by that? I mean, the differences in level loudness, amplitude, 
between things like the intro and then a verse and a chorus or a drop and a B section and a breakdown. You can see those those increases in level. And you can see here, this is probably a chorus. Here's probably a final chorus. They're higher in level. And then by microdynamics, people would often refer to those as transients or drums. Maybe that could be one definition of microdynamics. And uh, I'm talking about where you can see these large spikes in peak level. And I can see here that there are a few standout moments in the in the mix where peak level exceeds the average level, definitely, as peak level always would, but it also exceeds the average peak level. So if you kind of tried to estimate what the average peak level is, it, you know, it's probably around here, right? Maybe that's a bit of an excess. Now you can see there's these outliers, these outlier peaks that are that are way above. I'm not sure yet until I get them in audio editor, but they're way above the average peak level. And so I can already tell, uh, and this is very common. This isn't necessarily a, a mistake in the mix. This is just something that I notice when I'm doing my QA and prepping the mix for mastering. I know I'm going to want to do something about those. Yeah, so this is great. I love this view, being able to look at this exaggerated waveform in Dropbox. It doesn't look like this in a DAW, right? So yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and download the file. So here we are, we've got Isotope RX10 audio editor um, open. Uh, they just came out with version 11 and I've uh, got a license for that. I haven't installed it yet, so stay tuned for that. I'll probably be doing some stuff in RX11 very soon. But for now, we're just gonna use RX10 and uh, we're gonna grab the mix and we are gonna throw it in there. So there we go. We're looking at just the waveform. We can adjust and, and look at the spectrum or a blend between them. But in this case, I'm just looking at the waveform. And we're going to get a couple of the tools up and running here. So we're going to get D-Clip up. And uh, somebody uh, mentioned in one of my last videos about clipping. Oh, didn't you know that D-Clip doesn't do clipping? It's uh, it's actually a D-Clipper. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. Um, I use D-Clip to purely draw a horizontal line on the project. So I'm just using this as a visual reference. I'm very aware that um, I'm not clipping something by using the D-Clip plugin. Um, it's funny. So we're going to get out, uh, we are going to get out waveform stats. Okay. We are going to get out gain and we are going to get out phase. Okay. So these are all tools that, uh, we are going to use or explore using. Okay. And, uh, yeah, let's just kind of move things around. So waveform stats, this is going to show us where the peak levels are. And I'm going to just click on one of these and it takes me to that peak, right? And then we can zoom in and we can see where the peaks are. And we can see if we really zoom in, we can see samples, right? So we can see, ah, yeah, there we go. So waveform stats is very useful. It shows me the loudness. Uh, it's showing the max RMS level, minimum R RMS level. It's showing the LUFs, integrated loudness, short-term. All of this stuff is, is very interesting, showing loudness, range, LRA, and all of that stuff. But uh, really, what I'm going to be doing here is just kind of assessing and looking at, uh, at peak level. And then I'm going to look to see if there's anything going on in terms of asymmetrical waveforms that I might want to correct with the phase tool. So let's go to some of these uh, little outliers so you can see this outlier peak. And I kind of want to get the D-clip set. So you can see here, I'm kind of just uh, getting it set to where, where the peaks are. And actually, what I might do here is uh, normalize the file, because you can see there's only so far down you can go with D-clip. So uh, let's actually go normalize, and we'll go render. And that's just going to bring the bring the peak level all the way up to zero. I do not recommend normalizing your pre-master or your mix when you send it to a mastering engineer because it's uh, difficult to easily tell if something has actually clipped over zero or if it's just a file that's been normalized. So I always send mixes out if I'm the mixer or ask for mixes with just, just a bit of headroom. Could be a dB, could be half a dB, but just enough that you know it's not clipped. So uh, so now what that does, it just gives me uh, more vertical range. And now when I bring the D-clip down, I, what I'm looking for here um, oh, oh, first things first, 
let's pay respect for where this technique came from. I learned this all from Nicholas DiLorenzo, okay? He's a boss with RX Audio Editor. Um, he probably learned it from other people. He mentioned that he learned some of what he knows from uh, presentation at NAMM. He learned some of what he knows from, from Bob Katz, but uh, respect to Nicholas for really, I think, originating a lot of this content on YouTube. If you wanna watch his videos on using Isotope RX Audio Editor, I'll link them below in the description. They are badass, follow Nicholas's channel. He is fantastic. So uh, yeah, respect to Nicholas for uh, kind of getting me on board with this. And now that I use RX for mastering prep, I, I can't stop using it. I just love it. So yeah, first things first, we're going to use the D-clip, not to clip or D-clip. We're literally just using this as a visual reference to kind of try and see where's the average peak level, you know? And I'm kind of like, yeah, right around there, I'm feeling is about the average peak level. So anything that goes higher than that, I now have a visual reference and I can go in and kind of take a look at it and be like, what do I want to do something about that? Okay, so uh, let's go to the first big outlier, which is this guy here, okay? And you can see this is a section where the waveform goes asymmetrical and you can see it's got a, a really big um, over uh, above average peak level. So uh, what, I'll, what I'll do with that is uh, really, really get in there. How, how big is this? Okay. How many, how many samples is this? Really not much. So uh, I'll highlight this using this tool right here. And then uh, I'm going to manually gain it. Okay. And so I'm going to reduce this and render it. You know, that was a little heavy handed. We didn't need that much. Let's do two. So what we're doing here is effectively manual limiting. Now, if you wanted to, you could do this on a channel by channel basis. Uh, and that would kind of be like using an unlinked, a stereo unlinked limiter that would limit the channels independently. Um, I'm not going to do that here because I'm not trying to push this. This is not a mix I'm going to be pushing super loud. Um, so yeah, I would use that technique more if I needed to limit each channel individually. And that's that's what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking it down to where that uh, that D clip threshold is. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to scan and I'm going to find the next one. And let's take a look at this one. We can see there's a couple here that are that are really close. And then this guy over here. So when we go in, these are kind of micro events. These are very, very, very short events. And I'm going to go and I'm going to highlight these. I'm going to gain them down. So let's uh, fast forward as I as I go and do that to the rest of the project. Whew, that was a lot of scrolling and zooming in, uh, but look at the results that we have here. We can see that the consistency has improved. We've been able to attenuate a lot of these individual outlier peaks and rein those in manually. And um, yeah, th there's a Bob Katz quote, the best limiter is no limiter. Uh, Nicholas was reminding me of that. It's from his book uh, on mastering. And what do we mean by that? The best limiter is the limiter that doesn't produce any distortion, which means manual gain adjustment, sometimes at a sample by sample level. And uh, it's a bit nitpicky and fussy work, but man, does it ever yield great results. That way, you know, if we take a look at the waveform statistics, I'd normalized this file. So the peaks were right up to zero dB. And we can see now that the sample peak level is negative 1.26 on the left channel and negative 0.5 on the right channel. Interestingly, I was noticing that most of the individual outlier peaks were happening in the right channel. So that's something that I'm going to pay attention to. So that is uh, the process in Audio Editor. And once we've got that uh, ready to go, then we can go ahead and render it and bring it into the DAW. All right, we're all ready to go and get set up in my main Studio A control room for the mastering session proper. This is everything that I do to kind of prep the track and, and QA and have a listen through. Again, props to Nicholas DiLorenzo for educating people on that Isotope RX audio editor process that I used. And uh, I dropped a lot of links below this video into other references that I think would be useful for you. And stay tuned for the next video. So we're gonna go hop in the control room 
and I will drop a card and a link to the description for the mastering session for this track Joshua Tree by Angus Wilson. I'll see you there.